this is the first time that I'm going to be using this RCBS Match Master in match mode. Now I've used it before. You may have caught some of our uh, other videos uh, on this same unit when we were comparing three different generations of RCBS electronic powder scales, but this is the first time that I'm going to be using it in match mode. And I'm going to be loading today with RL15, uh, Reloader 15 powder for my 308 Winchester. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to be throwing 42.9 grains of RL15. So RL15, uh, I need to set the speed at which these dispensers are going to work. And I do that uh, simply by pressing a speed setting 1 through 4. And this is the uh, recommended powder speed. So I press the speed followed by the powder button, 3 powder. Now the next step is to add powder to the hopper up on top here. And now having done that, uh, I'm going to change it from standard mode to match mode. And to do that, I need to enter mode. I'm going to press 2, and that, I guess, says match. Press go. Right now it's off, so I'm going to toggle it to 4 on and then followed by go, and you'll notice here that it says match, or M-A-T, which represents match. And you'll also notice that now I have two digits to the right of the decimal place, indicating that my precision is going to increase. Now also what's going to happen uh, is, and I, since I haven't run it in match mode before, I don't know this for a fact, but it's probably and almost certainly going to run slower uh, than if I was running it in standard mode. I'm going to go ahead and key this in. I said 42.9 grains of powder and now press go. Now that is exact. Let's go ahead and see how it does on a second load. Let's see. There we go. Man, that is exact once again. Now I don't usually have too much trouble with RL15 or Reloader 15. The real reason why I got this Match Master is number one, so I can throw my powder charges faster, but even more importantly it was my battle with Varget. Varget's a fantastic powder. I love to use it in a lot of different uh, rounds that I'm firing, a lot of different calibers, um, but uh, it's it, it, it's an extruded cylindrical powder, a stick type of powder um, that's just difficult for the, uh, uh, for the scales, a lot of these scales. Now, by the way, we see it made a little bit of an error. I'm going to see if I dump this back in and not use it, if the next charge is going to be better. But back to the Varget story. Um, I sometimes would have, you know, 10% of my, and that's, that's no kidding, about 10% of my charges were overthrown. Usually that was the problem, overthrown, too much came out. Um, and so then I would either be picking out a few kernels or granules of, uh, of Varga and try to get it right or just dump it back in the hopper and try again. 42.9. Two. Let's try her once again. There we go. Now this thing is sensitive, no doubt about it. Uh, and I'm actually wondering if the fact that I was talking while it was dispensing 
is the reason why it wasn't precise. Still got a 42.92. You know, I'm not so convinced that being off by two hundredths of a grain is going to be the end of the world. But why not get it right, right? So I'm going to go with 42.90 across the board. I just can't bring myself to throw it wrong when I know it's wrong. And that's the thing. I think you won't know it otherwise. I, again, still don't know that it's going to make a big difference. We'll be doing some tests on that later on. I wonder if the speed is a bit fast. Let me go ahead and adjust the speed. I'm going to change this to 2 powder. Go. Still in match mode. we go. That's more like it. I didn't really notice that it went much slower. This is at a speed of 2 versus the speed of 3 that it was set at before. Now she did a very good job. One thing I noticed is when it was throwing, and it wanted to throw 42.92 very, very frequently. Uh, and wh what I noticed is as I take this, and I'm literally going to remove just one kernel. Uh, looks like I have two. Okay, there we go. I have one kernel of RL15, a granule, in my hand. Now I'm going to add that one back in, that is the level of precision down to literally a kernel of RL15. Nice job, not very slow really. Do I need that level of precision? Is it going to make a difference? Well, I'm going to have to head out to the range and fire these over my chronograph, my lab radar, uh, and see how consistent my muzzle velocities are as a result. All right, I finished loading all of those cases or charging all of those cases and then finished off the entire reloading process by topping them off with a 168 grain Sierra tipped Match King bullet. And I weight sort all my bullets so this is, or at least for my precision rifles, um, this is a 168.0 grain bullets. And then I did find a chance to go out to the shooting range to give these things a test. Now, before I tell you about the results, let me kind of set up the little test I was running. Obviously, I am testing um, if weighing the powder charge to such a high level of precision does that really help? And the way that we're going to see that is not so much maybe in the size of the groups, although I would hope that that would translate into smaller groups, uh, lower uh, MOA and lower extreme spreads, but probably most importantly we need to look at the results from the lab radar chronograph and uh, what I really want to look at is the standard deviation of those muzzle velocities. Now with the Powder Pro and the Charge Master, I was able to pretty regularly, quite regularly, drive my standard deviation of muzzle velocities down to single digits. I could do that with the 308 Winchester, um, 220 Swift, 243 even the 223. So I should be able to get easily into single digit standard deviations with the new Matchmaster. If weighing powder charges to such a high level of precision really is terribly important toward 
achieving very, very tight or small standard deviations. So I have 20 cases that I've loaded. These are all Lapua brass that also has been weight sorted. And what I have is cases that vary in weight by less than a grain. In other words, actually this is eight tenths of a grain. Five of these cases have been um, neck turned previously and I actually touched them up once again just to make sure that they were as consistent as possible. In fact, all five that I used in this uh, little experiment uh, ended up having the exact same outside diameter of 332 or 0 0.332 of an inch. I'm calling that group my alpha group. I also have a Bravo group where those cases were nothing special at all. Uh, these happen to have an outside diameter to begin with of 335, or actually 3355 of an inch. And uh, uh, necks were not turned in this case. And nothing at all special was done with these. They were full length resized using my RCBS full length sizing die. And that still leaves us with 10 more cases that I'm calling my C or Charlie group and my Delta group. What I did with those is, um, I, again, I was using this same group or batch of Lapua brass and five of those were neck sized. So they started off full length size, got all my preparations done. Then I went ahead and neck sized uh, five of those with this Hornady uh, match grade neck sizing die and the 0 0.332 bushing. Okay, so that should affect a rather tight neck tension. Now the last group, my Delta group, was prepared very similarly but the neck sizing was achieved using this Forster uh, neck sizing die. And the outside diameter uh, was 0 0.3345 of an inch. As a result, once they're all loaded and I calculated the tension or neck tension on those bullets, I have four different unique or distinct groups that I'll be firing. Bravo group has the lightest neck tension of just over a thousandth of an inch, whereas Charlie has the tightest neck tension. So then I went out, I waited for a nice day. I wanted to make sure that the wind wasn't going to be affecting my group sizes. Um, and so I ended up shooting on a very, very calm morning. Uh, winds were recording at about one to two uh, miles per hour. Very, very calm conditions. And this is my resulting target. Now, what I always do before I go shooting for groups is I will run a patch or two through the bore. Make sure it's as dry as possible. I don't want solvent or oils in there to affect the first couple shots. And then I also fired, in this case, three Fowlers at the dead center bullseye. This was some uh, factory ammo. Didn't do too bad. I'm shooting at 200 yards here. And uh, then I went uh, and shot, as I normally do, my upper left bullseye and then Bravo here, Charlie, and Delta. Very different results. Uh, Alpha group, which remember, that was the group with very uniform neck sizes, uh, but also the thinnest of uh, neck thicknesses. But it didn't do very well. I got a 1.35 MOA size group, and this rifle typically shoots or gives me about 0 0.7, 0 0.75 uh, MOA. 
Bravo did a fantastic job, very, very small group, 0.57 uh, MOA. Charlie didn't do too bad, still a little bit worse than the par, a little bit worse than the norm, uh, but just under MOA, so 0.94 MOA. And then Delta, once again, uh, quite a bit larger than uh, I like, uh, one and a quarter MOA, roughly. What happened on the chronograph? Well, Alpha Group had a standard deviation of 17.5 feet per second. Not impressive at all. I mean, it's okay. It's something I would expect out of some pretty good factory ammo, uh, but I really thought we could do better with that level of precision in the powder charge. But Bravo did fantastic. Eight feet per second, as did Charlie, six feet per second. But then Delta, once again, back up to 18, 18.73 18 feet per second standard deviation on those muzzle velocities. What does all that mean? Well, number one, it means that your precision or consistency, let me say, of your muzzle velocities is not entirely dependent on the powder charge. Certainly, a wildly different powder charge between round to round is not going to ever give you very good consistent muzzle velocities. But on the other hand, what we just had, uh, what we just saw, where I had thrown precisely 42.90 grains of RL15, it did good, it did fine, but in some cases, I had some pretty large uh, inconsistencies in muzzle velocity. So there's more to it. And I think some of that has to do with those neck tensions uh, the, uh, or neck thicknesses as well. The bullets are leaving the mouth of that case in a rather erratic fashion. I think that's what we're seeing in some of those uh, instances. Um, and that could be because of the neck tension that's being applied to those bullets. In other cases, or instances I should say, uh, everything is going along very consistently. So we have very consistent muzzle velocities, very nice small group sizes, and that's what we like to see. So while the Matchmaster uh, is definitely fast, it's accurate, it's precise, it's a fantastic scale. Uh, but let's not fool ourselves into thinking that it's going to give us um, all the time. It's not going to be able to give us one or two or three even single digit uh, muzzle velocities. That's just the reality of it. And at the same time, it's a pretty good lesson learned. Thanks for watching this special edition of Extreme Reloading.